So intravenous morphine is commonly used for control of pain in chest pain patients. So, and it's very used very commonly in ACS population. So, and uh, pharmacological studies suggest that a use of intravenous morphine in uh, ACS group can have adverse hemodynamic effects. And the recommendations regarding the use of IV morphine in different guidelines are also uh, not in sync. So we decided to look at uh, the use of intravenous morphine in ACS group. What we were looking at, how, uh, what was the occurrence of in-hospital mortality and morbidity related to IV morphine group in the ACS uh, population. We studied 399 patients and uh, uh, we looked at four adverse in-hospital outcomes, which were namely cardiac death, recurrent myocardial infarction, cardiogenic shock, and CHF and a combined outcome which was patients which, who had one or more of these outcomes. And our results showed that out of the 399 patients who received more, uh, 399 patients were studied, 154 received morphine and 245 were not treated with morphine. And the incidence of combined outcome was 13% in the morphine group compared to 5.7% in the non-morphine group. And this difference was statistically significant with a P of 0 .0, uh, 0 0.011. And the most important thing was, the most important outcome which was significant was the recurrent myocardial infarction, which was 3.9% in the morphine group compared to 0% in the non-morphine group. The other thing that we were looking at, what is the kind of therapy that we are giving them for control of their chest pain? Recommendations say for control of their chest pain, give them anti-ischemic therapy. If still in pain, give them some sublingual nitro. If still in pain, give them continuous nitro. If still in pain, then go to morphine. But what, what are we doing? Out of the 154 who received morphine, only 13 had received some kind of continuous nitrate, which is just 8.4%. So A, there is a trend towards adverse outcome with the kind of approach that we are using. And the B, the approach that we are using is also not the right one. This is the kind of message that we were trying to send across to people who are managing patients, especially down in the emergency room where their first point of contact is. Then the other aspect that we looked at, we all know that morphine can give you a high and make you, you know, and it can uh, make somebody drug seeking. So this is what we were looking at. Is there any data which would show this, uh, which would confirm our theoretical approach? So we looked at 460 patients who had chest pain but had a non-cardiac etiology for that. Out of those 460, 247 were treated with morphine and 213 were not treated with morphine. So the outcome that we were looking at was emergency room return, which was defined as three or more visits to the emergency room within the next two consecutive months for same uh, complaint. An interesting finding, 33 in the morph out of 247 in the morphine group returned, zero out of 213 in the non-morphine group. So this suggests that 13.3% out of 0%, statistically significant. So maybe what we are doing by our approach is sending them the wrong message, sending the patients the wrong message that morphine is, the is, a f is an accepted first-line therapy for the control of their chest pain, and they just come back to the ED for repeated narcotic therapy. I mean, this is something we don't know if we are creating or it is, so are, are they drug-seeking uh, to begin with? Or maybe by giving them morphine for the first time, we have made them. This is something that we could not ascertain out of this, but this is something to think about. Maybe we are making, by giving them at the, for the first time, we are making them, or they're already to begin with, and they just keep coming back. And we t keep telling them, okay, have morphine, your pain is gone, you can go home. And so that's why they keep coming back. So, uh, I mean, some of the pain literature and the more narcotic literature says, it tells you that if you have, when you're, when, upon your first contact on treatment with uh, narcotics, when you're treated with narcotics for the first time, there are some factors, if, like, if you, like, you feel like this was one of the best sensations ever, which may drive you towards uh, drug seeking. It won't make you drug seeking immediately, but if you tend to develop a liking for it, then you may, you know, you can just keep coming back and back and back. As I pointed out, the pharmacological studies which showed uh, the heart rate goes down, the uh, blood pressure goes down, and morphine can depress respiration. So all in all, taking all these factors into account, what happens is the oxygen content of the blood goes down and the oxygen supply to the myocardium goes down. And this is exactly the pathophysiology, what happens in myocardial infarction, there's a thrombus and the uh, oxygen supply to the heart goes down. And so we are doing it through a drug now. So probably that makes more sense that why they were having more incidence of recurrent myocardial infarction as against the other other things like a cardiogenic shock would take a more like a more ischemic load to present with but probably this could be the reason that there was zero in the non-morphine group and 3.9 percent in the morphine group